They could have thought to yourself that just an entire gender was doing things wrong and that they just need to change. This is what was published in the herald.com.au, an American an Australian, sorry, paper. Violence against women are unacceptable, men need to change their ways. I think that's a good idea. I mean, my ways are not doing violence towards women. If I change my ways, I don't like the outcome. And I don't think you're going to like it either. Are you sure you wish to generalise in this way? Perhaps it began with the Me Too movement, but for whatever reason, Australia is finally having an overdue look at the absolutely unacceptable levels of violence perpetrated by men against women. You know, I agree. Men need to change. Now women need to change as well, because the levels of violence against from women to children, absolutely unacceptable. Time for that conversation. Oh wait, no it's not, is it? It's never going to be time for that conversation. Because women didn't do nothing, but men certainly did. In the federal parliament, libertarian and liberal democrat senator David, I'm not pronouncing that, has talked himself into trouble by tackling the green senator, senator Sarah Hansen Young during a debate about women's safety. He said that they might feel justified in saying that most men aren't rapists, but the terrible truth of the matter is that rapists, the perpetrators of violence against women in all its forms, are overwhelmingly male. Okay, but that doesn't negate his statement. If most men are not rapists, even if most rapists are male, the problem isn't that they're men. Because if it was, most men would be rapists, wouldn't they? The problem is clearly something else. But I guess if you're a feminist bigot and you do have a deep and abiding hatred of men, it would be really easy to say, well, it's because they're men. Just like it's because they're... N oh yeah, that's not how we do things, is it? Because that would be racist. Just like this is sexist. Because what you're doing is making people guilty who have done nothing wrong. We're not having that. Or we can have a nice conversation about Islam in the West and what Muslims have been doing. Because it's funny, because if you replace anything written in this that says male with Muslim, suddenly this is massively bigoted. Wildly Islamophobic. But it's okay when you're just like, you know what, it's just men. It's just men that are the problem. Yeah? Is that the way it is? It's a funny old world, isn't it? And while rare incidents such as last month's shocking attack on an Adamstown schoolgirl shine a spotlight on street safety, don't know what happened there, but I know where I'd place my bets, the sad reality is that most attacks on women take place within the home. Okay. But don't most people, like, die within their home anyway? Because it's where they spend most of their lives, isn't it? So if you spend most of your time in your home, then you're more likely to die there? It's just numbers. Same with the mo most people are killed by a partner or something like that. Well, yeah, you spend most of your time with these people. Is it any particular wonder? But anyway, mathematics aside, yes, many women do feel intrinsically unsafe walking the street alone or even in a small group at night. Okay, but you're, you're asking me to care about something that I can't change or do anything about. I'm not the thing that makes these women feel unsafe, and we can't talk about the thing that does. And that's feminism, by the way. Putting this into... I mean, like you've already said that most of the problems is... I mean, 13 out of 14 assaults against women are carried, about, carried out by someone they know. So the chances of something happening to you when you're walking around on your own at night are really slim. Mis but you you worry about it disproportionately, even though that's not really the problem. This means educating girls and boys about stranger danger is a valuable lesson. Yeah, but everyone knows that. That's what I've been doing for decades, at least my entire life. And yes, many women do feel intrinsically unsafe, but history shows us the man a woman knows she should fear the most. <laughs> Be afraid of the men you know, women. Men who are the sons of women. Men who are the brothers of women. Okay, but what about when women murder children? Children who are the sons and daughters of women. Those murderous, murderous fucking women. See, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? It sounds like the sort of thing you couldn't possibly stand by. And yet it's still true. There's ways of interpreting these things. And it's not just a blanket blame an entire gender for what some people have done. Regardless of the gender of those people. There's this is why we have a criminal justice system that punishes people on an individual basis. We punish people by what they have actually done wrong. And that is what we call justice. Men who have put on the spot say they love women with all their hearts, but men who nevertheless think nothing of giving a woman a cuff across the face. Yeah, these are the same guys. Or much, much worse, as Kimmy's terrible account makes clear. I haven't seen the account of Kimmy, but let's just assume it's terrible. While none of this is new, 
men have been hitting women for all of recorded history. Fucking just men. But then women have been murdering children for all of recorded history, so maybe they deserved it. That's all I'm saying. Were the men really so wrong with to hit these child murdering women? I know this is a terrible conversation for us to be having, but it's the only way we can fight back against these narratives. Don't murder your children, women. It's not very nice. <laughs> It is increasingly apparent that the steps that the enlightened society has to take to change the situation, to have all men accept women as equals... God, imagine thinking you're going to do something that all men agree to. I... You know, not even all men pee standing up. Like, you are never going to achieve anything where you say all anything, so just stop. But not chattels to be subjugated with fists. Yeah, because that's how, that's how men basically view women. Chattel. <laughs> just the physical property I see this was written by Matt Binder but it's simply not enough men need to start thinking hard about what it means to be a woman in 21st century Australia yeah but uh, don't have to think that long do we <laughs> do you spend much of your time on constant alert worrying about the man across the darkened street or the footsteps behind you yeah I'm sure that women in general, are just living in a state of absolute fear. I mean, I see it in my own country. When women are just wandering around, you can tell they're paranoid. They jump at the slightest sound, and they, they scream without warning. Now, you, women are not living in a fucking war zone, you lunatics. This is the safest society that's ever existed. Ever. And women are living in it, and you're living in it, and you're acting like you're in mortal danger at every given moment. You're not just so you know. Or even more likely, the drunken husband, or the ice-addled partner. I don't know what that means. But there might, there, yes, there might be sociological explanations for these men are the way they are, but women live on the same planet and do not have the same propensity for violence, except against children, when it's way worse. Oh god, I keep bringing that up, but it's such an inconvenient statistic that most children that are murdered by a parent are murdered by a woman by a factor of like three to one. So, I mean, oh, God, I know, it's, it's really dangerous to be a child around a woman. Children just spend their time on constant alert, worrying about a woman that might try and drown them in the bath or something. Oh, my God. The fault is not theirs. It's, it's not women that need to change their behaviour, it's the men. That's right. It's not the children that need to change their behaviour. It's the women. 